chapter chapter uh, two. Um, this chapter here is uh, is mostly about the periodic table. So, and here is the picture of a periodic table. And I think I do have a picture of a periodic table. Some already downloaded for you here. If you look. Oh, that's not the chapter uh, two. Um, that's not the case. I'm looking for sharp for the yeah, it is. We can we can make it bigger because it's I can make it bigger so you can see it. And you can see the periodic table here. So the uh, periodic table, if you look at the periodic table here, um, is made uh, by organizing those elements. You can see those elements here. Those elements are organized according to their what? Increasing um, atomic number. So if it's asked in multiple choices, and that's a very often asked, by the way. So it's a favorite question for the, um, let me just, uh, let me um, make it bigger so you can, you can watch. I hope you can see it much better, yeah. So now you can, you can see it much better. So what's the basic uh, idea of, or, uh, of ordering or, or combining those elements together in a, in a table called periodic table? Well, it turns out to be the basic idea is we put those elements according to their increasing atomic number. So. The basic idea here, you can write it here. Let's take this one here. And the basic idea of the periodic table. Is increasing. Atomic. Number. Correct. And what's the other idea? Well, and it looks like by organizing those elements, we put uh, uh, them in a table that's made of periods. Table, table is made the table is made of periods and groups. So periods are, are from where? Goes from left to, uh, to the right, correct? Horizontally, horizontally, so horizontally. The groups on the other hand, from top, to the bottom. That's vertically, correct? That's vertically here, and this is horizontally. So, good idea. So we put those elements according to the increasing uh, atomic number. We'll come and, and explain what atomic number is later on. But at least this is the idea. Those elements are put together according to increasing atomic number. And this table made, periodic table made of groups and periods. Periods are the horizontal uh, rows, and the, the uh, groups are the vertical columns. So that's what we have here. Each element is recognized by a symbol. So here it is. Each element is recognized. by a symbol. Now it has not to be um, representing the same, the same pronunciation or the same um, name. It might be different, different, uh, correct? A different symbol, by a symbol, well, not the name. Not, we will not say a name because sometimes the symbol does not match the name itself. I can give you an example here. Look at sodium, for example. Sodium is Na, correct? This is sodium. 
So we will not say this is SO, no. This is sodium. However, Na means from the Latin word, uh, nat natron, N-A-T-R-O-N, that's a long time. Uh, there was a valley in, a, in the Pharaoh Empire in Egypt, and they were collecting some elements of sodium carbonate, and they put the name of uh, natron. So if you look at the uh, Latin name for, for sodium is natron, N-A-T-R-O-N. So they take N-A from it. So, and this you can, you can see the lot of symbols over there does not match. Another example, lead. P-B, correct? This is lead. We will not say L-E, no, we say lead, correct? So you will see a lot of some names are not matching. But in general, they are really matching. In general, they, they, there is a match, but not always, not always, correct? Not always. But there are some exceptions uh, for, for this, uh, for general rules, there are exceptions. So that's what, what the whole thing. So the symbols are, can be, the first alphabet of the symbol is, has to be what? Capital letter. And the second has to be small letter. You cannot have, a symbol has both uh, capital letters, correct? So can I take this one out? Everybody has it, please. Everybody has it. Everybody has it. Take it out. So now we'll talk about the symbol itself. The symbol cannot be the uh, symbol here has one or two max maximum. Alphabets. The first alphabet should be capital. The first alphabet here uh, should be should be um, capital letter. That's a must. Capital letter. This is a must. You cannot have an element symbol, small letter, you can't start with. No, that's a big mistake. It has to be a capital letter. So, And the second one, and the second alphabet here, the second alphabet should be small letter. Again, this is must. You cannot see two alphabets, capitals. You cannot see two alphabets, small letters. And you cannot see the first alphabet is small letter. You can look at them, all those. And you cannot see more than two alphabets. Correct? You cannot have maximum of two. You cannot have three alphabets. Correct? That's what we, we have here if you look at them, correct? Already you can look at the periodic table. So the periodic table, you have this, we'll go for a periodic table and look at those periods and, uh, and groups together. So everybody has this? Everybody has this? Can I take it out? Okay, take this one out and come here. Look at this. We have, we have group number one up to group number 18. Correct, so here it is, um, group number, uh, you like maybe take the red here. Group number one, the group is going from top to the bottom. So this is the top, and this is the bottom of this table, of the periodic table. We have from one to all the way to how much? 18. One to 18, look at this. 1 to 18 groups, from top to the bottom. Those are the groups. And how many periods we have? We have seven periods. So we have uh, groups, 18. How many periods? The periods here, from left to the right. How many we have? Seven, seven, seven one. So one, 
all the way, the second, that's the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So we have seven periods, correct rows, or called periods, and we have seven columns called groups, correct? This is, this is an 18, 18 groups we have. However, when it comes to really the, the, the uh, determining uh, electrons distribution, we have to, this is the modern one, correct? However, it's not usable just to use this periodic table. We have to use period when it comes to configuration to distribution of electrons. We have to use the old designation which is in this case, I'll use the red color here. This here, those two groups with those here, correct? Those called main, main groups and designated with the alphabet A. Oops, sorry. And designated with the alphabet A. So those here, A group. Those here are A group. Correct? And in between here, guys, here, these groups here. called the transitional or transition uh, transition element group and designated by the alphabet B. So we have A and B. The red ones are, are A and the brown one here, if you can see here, those here called called uh, the transitional uh, group B, correct? Why is this very important compared with the modern one? The modern one is a very good one too, but the problem is does not show me the distribution of when it comes to distribution of, as you will see, electrons, then we will have a problem with it. So therefore it's not showing, correct? So we have this one here, Cut, cutting off from from group number three, three here, up to twelve. So twelve, so three, and twelve. Those are the groups from top to the bottom called transitional groups. The others are called main groups. Any question you have? Any question you have? Everybody? Everybody has it? So let's take this one out and look at something very interesting there at the bottom inside the transition elements. And can I take it out? Okay, so let's look at the, uh, I'll make it smaller here so you can see what, what I meant with this. I'll make it smaller here. Okay, guys, uh, you might not be able to see it. Yeah, here it is. The, the group, if you look at the periodic table, look, let's look at the periodic table. After barium, see the group number of the period. Look at the period number of the six. Cesium, CS, although at the bottom, CS, number six, period, the period from left to right. Cesium, group, uh, this is group one, correct, 1A. One barium is 2A, correct. However, when it comes then after barium, it comes a group, correct? This, this group called from lantern, lanthanide. So the, the, it takes the group of the first element called lan, lanthanide, okay? So if you look at this, if you look at this, so from the first one, and then this group here, uh, let me... Uh, let me um, just put the red one here. So this group here called lanthanides. See here, it came after barium from 57 to 71. 
That's a group condensed. And it goes one, it goes down L A all the way L L U. L A fifty seven to seventy one L U at the bottom. L A to L U. That's lanthanides. And the same token in the seventh period, correct? From eighty nine actinium all the way to Laurentium uh, L R, this is called actinides, the actinide group. Those again, they belong to the group of transitional element group, transitional element group B, group B. But those are condensed together in one group because they have physical and chemical properties are the same. So from LA to LU, lanthanides, they have similar physical and chemical properties. So that's the reason we compress them in one. Are you following me here? The actinides from 89, the number, this, the number in the top is called atomic number. That's what we order those, those elements according to increasing number of what atomic number. See, hydrogen is one, then you have helium is two, then it goes to lithium is three, beryllium is four, and it goes then uh, five is, is boron and it goes on, carbon is six. It goes by the atomic number. So increasing atomic number will give us that's the order of those elements in the periodic table, correct? And this one here called actinides. So lanthanide and actinides are grouped together. Elements are grouped together. They uh, exhibit the same physical and chemical properties. That's the reason we are grouping them, uh, compress them and bring them together. So from 57 to 71, that's lanthanides group, and they show the same from 57 to 21, the same physical chemical properties. And from 89 to 103, called actinides, those show, those elements show the same physical and chemical uh, property. Everybody agrees on that? So, any question you have? Any question? Next, we have to look at the, um, at the physical property of those elements. Correct? Are we ready for that? Let's look at this. In this periodic table, we can recognize metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Metals, nonmetals, and metalloids, correct? So we can say the nonmetals are, are really, uh, I mean, very obvious. You can see them here. They are the purple color. So maybe red here, maybe, I don't know. So let's take the, we take, Maybe the brown one. Let's take the brown color. So those here, look at this. Can you see them? Those are mostly uh, non-metals. With, with those here too. Those are non-metals. Carbon is non-metal. Correct? So now we have idea about the non-metals. So those are non-metals. Hydrogen, put number one, because the Non-metal. So all those here, non-metals. And we talked about the, the solid non-metals. They are the only two characteristics. Their atoms are close to, get, to each other, very close to each other. And the, they are not compressible. I mean, the non-metals are compressible, but they don't conduct electricity. Those are non-metals. They don't conduct electricity. And they are compressible. So you can, if you compress them, you can make out of them liquid. Compress further, you can make out of them solid. Those are the nonmetals. Now the metals here. <coughs> now we have even sulfur, and the, 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 those are nonmetals as well. Now we have something very unique. The red ones here. This is red one. This is a red one. This is a red one here. Correct? And if you look at this, you have, um, I think this one here and this one here. So those are called metalloids. They are not metal and they are, they are not really metal 100% and they are not non-metal 100%. Depending on what the condition they are in, you can put them as a metal, consider them the metals, and 
you can consider them as non-metals, correct? So the glass is made of silicon, correct, oxide. Silicon in this glass is acting as non-metal. But I have a silicon in our laptop, iPad, chip silicon, conduct electricity a little bit, not that much. Metalloid does not conduct electricity 100% like metal, correct? So those are called metalloid. And the metal here, or the brown one, those are non-metals. Again, two items, conducting electricity, compressibility, and the way how they, they, the atoms are, are coming together. In non-metals, they are mostly gases, mostly gases, correct? So the non-metals are mostly gases. All this brown, all this brown here, this brown here are mostly gases, but we have exception. We have exception for this rule. What is our exception? We have carbon is non-metal. However, it is solid. Charcoal, correct? Charcoal is solid. Uh, we have non-metal phosphorus. Can be phosphorus can have the color red or, or white. White phosphorus. So crystals, solid. Silver has very bright yellow color. This is solid, but those are non-metals. They don't conduct electricity. Bromine, on the other hand, is non-metal, but it's liquid. Look at this. So we have exception, not all of them gases, but the majority are the non-metal, not conducting electricity, are they are compressible. However, there some of them comes in nature as, as solids. Carbon is solid, phosphorus is solid, sulfur is solid, correct? And bromine, even, even more extreme, is a liquid. It's not metal, but a liquid. Iodine is a solid, correct? So, uh, this is just to tell you how they, they, they differ. The, uh, the non-metals are mostly uh, solid, correct? The, the, non, uh, the metalloids are solid. So, the rest of the elements, which is over 75% of the periodic table, the blue one here, all those... All this one here, everything here, those are metals. Those are what? Metals. They conduct electricity 100% and they are not compressible. Mostly they are uh, solids. They are solids. We have exception, yes. We have exception for this. Mercury is, is a metal, but it's liquid. Are you following me here? So you can see even the color of it is different from the other one. Can you see it? So you can see it has a different uh, color here. That's a, that's a liquid. Bromine is liquid, uh, mercury is liquid. So, but bromine is a non-metal and mercury is a metal. So you get the idea? So if you ask, most of the elements in the periodic table are what? Metal, metallos or non-metals? What you, your answer is from the th three multiple choices? Metals. You can see the most over 70% of the elements in periodic table are metals. Very few metalloids, about seven or so or eight, they can act as such, whatever you are putting in, in a compound or reacting, sometimes they react as uh, metals and they react as, as non-metals. In both ways, they are not 100% non-metal. They are not 100% non-metal. They can conduct electricity, but to very limited amount. So your computer has a silicon chip, it cannot go beyond 12 volts. You cannot put a direct high voltage on your, without converter, or you cannot put this one. The silicon chip might be dist uh, destroyed. So you get the idea? That's what we have about the, the whole, the whole, the whole thing. That's what you have to know, the basic one. Now we have to know from this, about the, the uh, we talked about it at the beginning because uh, we have to know before we go further about the uh, atomic number. What is atomic number? What is atomic number? We'll talk about atomic number. Any questions so far? You get the idea now? You get the idea about the periodic table? So mostly is now metals, 
uh, very, very few, about seven maybe uh, metalloids, and the rest of this is, uh, is uh, nonmetals. Uh, there are nonmetals liquid, like bromine. There are some of them solids, like phosphorus, sulfur, carbon, uh, though, and the majority are, are, are gases. The metals mostly, mostly, mostly is solids. We have mercury is, is an exception uh, for uh, the rules. Now, this element, this periodic table, I have it, does not have the name. It has see, three alphabets. We said we have to have what? At that time of this table, taken a long time ago, it does not have the new names of the last from, uh, from I think, from uh, uh, 113 to all the way 118. Those are names are new made. The names are, are what? New made by uh, whatever is, is the lab they are, they are the lab or the city or the country. Like uh, Tennessee, Tennessee, that's the, the federal lab in Tennessee. That's a TS, 117. Uh, Moscow, correct? 115. Uh, some of them, they carry out the name of the scientist itself. And you can, you can see uh, there are a lot of, especially uh, lanthanides and actinides. You will see Einsteinium, you will see Mendelevium, uh, Fermium, all Einsteinium, 99, Fer that's a scientist. Uh, Fermium, a scientist name. Uh, Mendelevium, a scientist name. That's the whole thing is the ordering them according to the increasing number of, of their uh, atomic number is done by Mendeleev and another scientist. Correct? Two scientists. But Mendeleev, uh, Mendeleev, Mendeleev, uh, Mendeleev is a Russian scientist done before the German scientist. Uh, they, therefore, they give him the credit for the uh, periodic table. So, any question you have? Any question? We'll go for, uh, for the atomic number and atomic uh, mass. So, if you don't have any question about this, I think I covered this one here. And let's go for the... That's the... the the person who Mendeleev who really uh, put this periodic table. And if you look at the history, if you have time, or history of chemistry, uh, he made like a card, puzzle cards. And whatever this puzzle card, so you can see, whatever is missing is, is there. So we have still five minutes, cool yourself down, cool yourself down. So that's Mendeleevium here. So, and there is another scientist that came, uh, Independent, but the one who had published earlier is Mendeleev, so they give him the the uh, the, uh, the uh, credit. So whenever you have uh, found anything, you have to publish it and copyright it. You will be having the first one. But if somebody had the same invention and then before you, then you have no no luck. But it's, it, the history is recognizing both of them, both scientists. So. Um, this is just the element here, one. Atomic number is one. What do we mean by atomic number is one? So this is hydrogen has atomic number one. This is atomic number. And this is called atomic mass. So the atomic number. So it turns out atomic number is number of the protons, we give them positive, correct? Or is equal number of electrons. So P for protons, E for electrons, and N, correct, no charge, for neutrons. So as you will see later on for Rutherford experiment, an atom, the smallest unit, this is a Greek uh, name. Atom is a Greek uh, name for the smallest unit of a matter. Atom is Greek, smallest unit of a matter. Any matter, smallest thing in this matter itself called an atom. And the atom is made of, made of protons, um, it is made of 
protons and electrons and uh, neutrons. Then what will happen is those here, protons and neutrons, are inside inside in the center of the atom, correct? In the center of atom. Electrons outside. So, um, we have still three minutes, guys. Cool yourself down, cool yourself down, cool yourself down. So, so we're going to come back and look. Atomic number equal to number of the protons equal to number of electrons. Atomic mass, which is larger, atomic mass equal to protons plus neutrons only. We, um, we take the, the number of electrons out because it's very tiny, very small, very small. So we don't consider it as part of the atomic mass. Does not really contribute to the mass. Very, very tiny, 10 to minus 24, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, those are two largest uh, particles and contribute to the atomic mass of an atom. So I will stop this because I want to upload this one here and then catch in the lab. So any question you have, we'll come and look at the Rutherford and the distribution of electrons. Any question? Okay.